challenges. We're back in action. Uh, <clears throat> my apologies for the delay. It's a little, have, have a little problem having anybody hear me or hearing anyone else, but I think we're okay now. Uh, I tried a different computer. So, uh, hey, Tony, uh, why don't we call roll? Sure, Arenas? Arenas? Here. Sorry. That's okay, Davis? Here. Camus? Here. Jones? Here, kind of. Licardo? <laughs> Here enthusiastically. Uh, so I wanted to welcome the uh, Bright-Eyed and Bushy-Tailed Rules Committee and Committee of the Whole uh, for the date of September 2nd for members of the public who are wondering why we might be dragging. Uh, we just got out of a 1 a.m. meeting uh, last night. So I want to thank everybody uh, for enduring yet another one. We hope this one will be shorter. All right, uh, we're going to start off with the, uh, the review of the final agenda for September the 8th. I'm going to ask if anyone has changes to the printed agenda. There are I'm no sorry. changes to, uh, there will be no changes to the uh, agenda for the 8th, Sam. There's oh, that's a good point. We're not going to be. There is no about agenda. The what am I talking about? You guys have the day off. Yeah, good point. I was wondering why that wasn't clicking through so well. It, it, it's all right. I'm going to be all alone at that meeting. We are, we already warned the public that this is going to be a very interesting rules meeting. So just <laughs> all right. keep moving it forward. All right. Keep those doggies rolling. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, why don't we go to the 15th since nobody else is showing up on the 8th. And I'll ask if anyone has changes to the agenda on pages. Let's see here. I'm trying to pull up the right pages. Here we go. Pages four and five. Are there any changes? All right. Uh, pages six and seven. Uh, pages eight and nine. Uh, Mayor, are we having a um, city manager's report this one? Because I, I remember I I one think of the meetings. Dave indicated no. he wasn't going to. Dave? Uh, Mayor Licardo, this is Lee Wilcox, Chief of Staff for the city manager's office. Uh, Hi. I'm I'm uh, in here for Dave today. So we are not planning uh, a COVID-19 update for the 15th. If any other emergencies uh, seem to happen between now and then, we can update the council during 3.1, but we're not planning on anything now. This is a minor act of rebellion by the city staff. <laughs> and maybe perhaps by boiling the, the frog, they'll be able to enable us to go without for more than a week. We'll see. Um, all right. I'm just hoping we're not tempting fate by saying we're not doing one. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. The snark, Sharknado may be scheduled that week and then we gotta have one. Yeah. All right. Add a locust or something. Yeah, locust, that'd be bad. Uh, okay, so I think we're up to page 10, weren't we? So we're up to now pages, any changes on 11 and 12? Uh, pages 13 and 14. I guess the question I ask is, are there things we want to bring together between 4243 and 44? I know there's a lot of the same staff reporting. I want to try considering taking that together and then we can break it up however we think is appropriate. Uh, clearly the video footage has to do with the uh, incidents in the after action report as does the issue around rubber bullets. Any concern around taking that together? No, I think that's a good idea. Would public comments also be for all three items? Yeah, and given that, you know, if we have 500 people, obviously won't be able to do this, but if we have a reasonable number, then we can go to two minute and hopefully folks will have enough time to be able to cover over topics. Yeah, because I know that uh, that was an issue when we did that the last time combining topics and giving folks one minute. And I, I, I did recognize that it was challenging for people to get multiple topics in in one minute. So that's, that's a concern. 
Yeah. Maybe we can have the videos start first, you know, like if I know that we're putting them all together, but maybe we could start with the videos and action act action report and then go to the, you know, other recommendations. Sure. Okay. All right. Um, we'll try to ensure the public has an opportunity to speak as to each of them. Um, in a way, hopefully we'll maximize the amount of time. We'll try to keep it at two minutes um, and take them together. Hopefully that'll give everyone a chance to be able to, within the two minutes, speak to whatever items come up on the three. Um, but I think there's an awful lot of overlap. Uh, okay, then on to pages uh, 13, 14. Mayor, I had to raise my hand as well. And so oh. I, I just wanted to, um, also emphasize how difficult it was for residents to um, to comment on multiple items. And so if uh, I realize that it's it's very difficult to do that in one minute uh, when it comes down to one minute. So I wonder if we're if we're going to couple things, if we could stick to the two minute mark and then that yeah. way they can uh, have multiple comments on. Right. Yeah, no, that's a good point, Councilmember. I guess that's what I was saying, but I didn't say it very explicitly. If we're going to try to consolidate these, we keep it to two. Um, and uh, oh, wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. We let's see wonderful. how it works out. If we've got five hundred people, maybe we'll, we'll reconsider. But let's let's see how it works out on the day of. Um, oh, wonderful, and and this it, this is the this is the date that we are not going to have a three point one. Yes, so we should have more time. Okay, so we should have more time. All right, w wonderful. In theory. I always say that and then I regret it. <laughs> right, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, okay, so I think we were on pages 13 and 14. Any changes? All right, pages uh, 15 and 16. Um, Mayor, I have to ask uh, city staff about item 8.2. Because in the, uh, the our, our, I have to ask our legal team to see if um, if Nora can answer this. I, I had to recuse myself a while back on item eight point two, because I had been in in negotiations to buy that property, and um, so I had to recuse myself from any decisions on this property. And I don't know if this still applies because that was you know more than three years ago or four years ago. Okay, so duly noted for the record. I assume he can still vote on the rules committee, uh, you know, moving these a whole agenda together. Is that right, Nora? Yes. Okay, but when the item comes up, yeah, hopefully we'll we'll we'll, we'll know whether you got to recuse yourself at that point. Yes. Okay, great. Thanks, Nora. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, on to pages. Do we say fifteen, sixteen? And then page 17 and 18, and immediately after consent. And page uh, 19. Can't okay. Do that, Mayor. No yawning. <laughs> All right. No more yawning. Here we go. All right. Let's go to the public. Um, Uh, Blair Beekman, welcome. Hi, thank you. Um, to speak to uh, next to the agenda items on uh, body cameras and just overall, we're beginning to have the public be involved with the police review issues at this time. Can an everyday person from San Jose who is currently making a court appeal have a body camera footage to help his defense case? That was the question brought here to, to January 22nd, 2020 to rules and open government public hearing. Overall, this is an issue that has already been on people's minds within San Jose city government and community for some time now. The question, how can the everyday public be allowed more rights to see body camera footage in order to prepare, prepare for their own court trials along with similar important needs and reasons. I hope the, the these day-to-day -day legal questions can make for some good decent connections with the current public ass of body camera 
police body camera footage and the extraordinary circumstances of community protest. And to also uh, to ask, it is about five years since the launch of a more extensive body, police body cam program across the country has started. The first serious cancer rate study should be starting to come in. In a time of COVID protests and the serious bureaucratic government review of ourselves, it may be time to begin to more openly acknowledge that police wearing body cameras all day can hurt ideas of positive sustainability for all persons of a community. Body cameras may simply lead to long-term health issues and higher cancer rates, and perhaps more subtly contribute to depressed bad decision-making in the day-to-day -day work of police officers. Good luck in all the police issues we have to review at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Scott Largent. Thank you. Uh, good, good afternoon, everyone. Scott Largent. Um, you guys pretty much were already kind of discussing what I was going to bring up, um, you know, allowing the public just to have more time per item. I, I know you guys do these marathon meetings. I, I don't think I could handle it if I was up on that dais. Um, if, if there's just a way to kind of break things up a little more so we do have the ability to talk per item, because, you know, I really wanted to talk about the independent police auditor and then at the last meeting and then separate with the chess camera. So they were all individual issues. And I'm not trying to like take up a tremendous amount of your guys' time. I know you're busy, but these are issues that directly affect me and the people that I advocate for in the public. So I, I just want to chime in on those. I, I don't want to start doing the shock and awe where I start, you know, putting my hand up for everything. And, and we know we have people that do that a lot. And, and I'm trying to stay away from doing that. Um, in this upcoming meeting, I am really hoping that the um, San Jose Police Department takes responsibility for what happened downtown. Once we review all this footage, we're really going to know what happens. There's excellent videos online right now. We made a big mistake here in San Jose. Um, I, it, we, we, we get out there, we take responsibility, we make people whole again that we shot with rubber bullets, and then we move forward. Because right now what's happening in our community is people are coming from outside the area, they're disrupting things. The protest that took place on Friday night was not cool. Um, I, I was able to film um, until I got my camera knocked out of my hand and I got attacked. I mean, it, this is just not right. And then people showing up with shields, umbrellas, you know, tactical gear. Um, this is not civil and peacefully protesting. And I'm just hoping that our PD takes responsibility because what they're going to need to do now is protect the community. And this is also protecting you, Sam Licardo. I don't want people lighting fires in your yard. Your home is your castle. I want your neighbors protected. I want my home protected. Um, and I'm just asking for you guys to, you know, just, you know, I appreciate what you do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Juan Lopez. Mayor, he needs to uh, upgrade his Zoom. Okay. Um, Juan, um, what I'm, I'm going to ask you to do, uh, I'm going to go on to the next uh, person, Juan Lopez. If you could go back to uh, the App Store or where, however you downloaded the Zoom app, please download it again and get the most recent version because the version you have is not compatible. Um, so it will not allow you to speak or be heard. So if you could try downloading again, we'll call a few more folks and hopefully by then you'll have it downloaded and you can raise your hand and we'll be able to hear you. Uh, Julie Rome Banks. It may be quicker also if he just calls in uh, by phone number too. Right. Uh, you, you, could you give us that phone number, uh, Henry, so everyone has it? Yeah, just give me one moment here and I'll pull it up. Okay, Henry will announce the phone number shortly. Uh, Julia Rome Banks. Uh, hello, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Welcome. I just want to say hi to everyone uh, here in the meeting. And uh, I just wanted to uh, say some things about uh, writing and such. Um, I think that the tactics used by, uh, by the police is, um, not acceptable and that the police should use more heavy tactics and start killing the niggers, the fires. Uh, if anyone is uttering anything that is denigrating to members of our community, particularly racist language like that, we'll be terminating the, uh, the call immediately. Jonathan, welcome. Jonathan, you appear to be on mute. All members of the council, I just wanted to say you're a bunch of faggots and cucks and fuck. Okay. Ashley Tate. 
Digger, 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 digger. All right, we're going to skip you. We're going to go past. There are two Jonathans. We're not going to call either of those. It appears they're the same person. Uh, I have some doubts, but I'm going to call the name Larry Gunk, and I suspect it may be a very short period of time. Larry Gunk? Yes, hello, everyone. How my name is Larry. So just... uh, Larry, we're not able to hear you right now. You may need to adjust your device. Are you late? Okay. Here's a problem with the device, Larry. Nikki Weber. Hello, Mayor Licardo. How are you doing today? Um. So I. I basically have a problem. I've, you know, I've been living in the city for almost all my life and I have never dealt with any of these protests before. This is kind of the first time I'm seeing this type of thing. Um, this is really heartfelt to me because, um, you know, I'm, I really, you know, I agree with the police. I, I'm on the police's side. Yes, these protests are good, but if you think you're, these people are putting their lives in danger for you for to protect the city and these people are vandalizing looting all these things imagine if someone walked into your small business that you can barely afford due to covid covid by the way is ruining everyone's life wear a mask everyone one thing also imagine in covid you have to get the stimulus check you're low on money and people come into your business and steal rob and loot and break stuff every single day. That is the opportunity cost of this nation. Today is the day that we change. We have to exclude these people from our city. We have to exclude this Black Lives Matter. I understand their views, but personally, I am an All Lives Matter fan. We have to take charge of this situation. We have to take charge. I am not going to sit behind a wall and just watch these liberals take over our country. I will not accept it. Black Lives Matter is a joke. I agree. Black people lives matter, but the organization is a joke. All lives matter. Trump 2020, baby. Patrick Mc, uh, McDiarmid. Uh, hello, members of the council. I want to say you're a bunch of niggers. Uh, John Blank. I'm going to terminate public comment very shortly. It's apparent that uh, we've got a pattern here. I want to make sure we give everyone a chance, but uh, I think we can pick up the pattern. Uh, John Blank. Hello, everybody. Can you guys hear me? I would just like to say... Yes, we can. Okay, I would just like to say with all these protests going on around the world and in our nation that I do believe that we need to use... <clears throat> I don't want to say more force because that'd be inhumane, but I would like to say that we would need to use more force like Trump sending in the National Guard to these cities that need a lot more help than they do because these people are coming in from outside and ruining our cities. Sir, did and, you just speak? Yeah. I'm you did. Right now. No, you were speaking on a prior, uh, previously, weren't you? Mr. Blake? Uh, Vance Walker? Hello? Oh, okay. yes. Hello? Hi. Hello. My is, yes. Uh, I would. I would like to speak out against the protests. The people surrounding the protests have been not doing so well. Like the other person has said, I totally agree with that. But we should use like more force. And I don't. I don't agree with people paying the government helping to pay their rent because people should pay their own rent because that's on them. Nigger, 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 nigger. Okay, we're going to go to the phone number ending 4963, and then we're going to terminate public comment after that.
person with the phone number 4963, please uh, press asterisk six. Thank you. Person 4963, we're not able to hear you right now. If you could push star six, they'll enable us to hear you. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, we're not able to hear you because your device appears to be muted right now. You have to dial push star six. Okay, we'll go back to the council. I'm sorry, the committee. Is there a motion? Motion to approve the agenda for September 15th. Second. Second. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Camus? Oh, I'm sorry. I think the hand was up from before. Apologize. Okay, great. All right, let's vote. Arenas? Yes. Davis? Aye. Camus? Aye. Jones? Aye. Licardo? Aye. All right, we're on to item um, D1, uh, which is a change for the study session date on Deardon Station. Hi, this is Tony. We'd actually like to defer D1 um, okay. for next week. All right. Uh, you need a motion, motion to, to do approve. that, or can that be done administratively? We can just do that administratively. Okay. We'll go into the public record. Item E. Motion and note and file. Second. All right. Motion. Mr. Beekman. Hi, thank you. Uh, before I start uh, my words on uh, public record, can I have time to speak uh, a public comment on the item D? Uh, no, sir. We're on we're on E public record. Okay, it's that kind of day. Understood. Thank you. Um, can oh no, I'm on my wrong speech here. Let me get to my other speech. Hopefully, this is the right one. It is not. I have to move again. Here we go. Okay, it is embarrassing to do, uh, it is embarrassing to do, and it takes a lot for, out of a person, and a person is often made fun of, but I'm going to make a major push in the next few months here that we need to be more clear and open in how we need to understand and comprehend at the local level the idea that COVID-19 has very possibly been a condition developed at the international level, and that people are not guilty of anything here at the local level. It is from this thinking, tenants and owners alike should not have to be stuck with its de debt burden. People of the state of California are simply trying too hard to serve a capitalist etiquette and philosophy that is nonsensical and hurtful at this point. I think the passing of AB 3088 will allow to continue court procedures for owners that will specifically intentionally hurt people who had no, who had no part in the COVID-19 global pandemic and how it is previously developed or how, how it is possibly developed and previously developed. People will be confused when we are at a time for simplicity and for real clarity. I think we need to begin to more openly talk about the depth of how many of the good intentions California state rent forgiveness bills were initially created. It is my guess AB 3088 will be headed towards important changes in the next few months. To conclude, as we work towards ideas of some call progressive, uh, I simply feel uh, these ideas need to be considered what is more caring, honest, practical, and decent in our day-to-day -day lives, and to help with the extraordinary time period we will be in for the next couple of years. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, on the motion, let's vote. Arenas? Yes. Davis? Aye. Camus? Aye. Jones? Aye. Licardo? Aye. Uh, item uh, G2 is establishing encampment blight and brush removal agreements. Uh, I believe Councilman Chemist, uh, are you the author of this one? I am. Yes, Mayor. Do, do and, you want uh, do you want to speak to this first? Sure. I you know I wrote this memo in response to a, a large number of complaints from constituents in regards to uh, you know all the blight on the Caltrans properties, water district properties. I think are constituents are honestly tired, tired of calling and getting no results. Um, 
And we've heard for several weeks that situation in Camp Med citywide beyond the staff juris is beyond the staff's jurisdiction. So, you know, uh, honestly, I talked about this last night and the basic premise is, you know, we're tired of giving our constituents excuses that this is Caltrans party property, it's not in our purview. And I'm wondering if we can go forward with an effort to do something similar that we did with UP or and I, know, and I know that you did something, Mayor, a while back with uh, Caltrans, and, uh, and uh, I, don't, I don't know what happened to that discussion. I think you alluded to it sometime last night. I also uh, was uh, listening to last night's discussion and heard that the county had a program that is okay. going through. Uh, I'm just wondering okay. if we could just duplicate that. I don't want to take a ton of staff time, if, but if we can get uh, our legal department to sign off on a couple of some contracts. And if we can get this across the finish line, I think our entire community will be happy uh, regardless. And I'm not asking, you know, this is not an ask to remove people. It's just to clean up all the litter on the, on the, on the sides. So, you know, and I, I'm, I'm so happy that uh, many of my colleagues decided to, to join on to this memo. Um, it's signed by several of my colleagues. I don't know if anybody else wants to say anything on it, uh, but um, happy to make a motion otherwise. Okay, thank you. Um, council member, um, so, you know, let me do this. Let me go to the public and we'll come right back to all the council comments. Uh, I know there are many who share your frustration, uh, but let's first go to the public, Mr. Beekman. Hi, uh, these homeless issues uh, and your work with Caltrans at this time was brought up uh, yesterday at the council meeting last night. Uh, thanks for the meeting, by the way. I had a, a, a good experience at the meeting. Um, yeah, so just, uh, you know, I, I was, it was nice to learn that you have to, you know, call up Caltrans and you have to clear things with them first. And, uh, you know, it sounds like you're in a difficult situation and I, you know, all I can do is just, I hope you can uh, keep cool heads and whatever is needed to just keep your cool, decent person about you in, in, in the decision making you have to do at this time. Uh, good luck to all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Scott Largent. Thank you, everybody. Uh, good afternoon, Scott Largent. I, I'm trying to figure out how the process of the Rules Committee here uh, works. I don't know if it's you bring things forward um, as far as putting them into the agenda. I, I, I'm, I'm just learning, so bear with me. Um, the trash that is out there, a lot of this stuff, because you guys know I'm all at all these encampments, the creeks everywhere. I document all this stuff. I film it, you know, blah, blah, blah. Most of this stuff, people are putting out in front of their homes and they're listing it on Craigslist free. Well, when you put piles of furniture out in front of the house in San Jose, every tweaker in the area, and we know there's tons of them everywhere, they grab all that stuff and then they bring it back to some encampment, some place, and they start making bizarre, crazy stuff. And I have a lot of videos of watching people do this. Um, I would think the city would get kind of creative with it and maybe start telling our residents that you need to properly dump your stuff. Like they should be taking that stuff to the dump. And by putting it outside, yeah, they're like, hey, great, we saved 50 or 60 bucks, but that st stuff ends up in a field out on Spring Street, ends up in a creek, um, you know, and that's what's happening with a lot of that stuff. Um, we also have a problem with the recycling here in Santa Clara County. Meth addicts spend all day long destroying the garbage cans, just ripping everything apart, trying to find cans so they can haul them all the way across town. Now you guys see everybody that some guy will have seven bags on his, you know, he's pedaling like mad. It's hundred degrees out. He's methed out of his mind. That's what these people are doing to support their drug habit. So why don't we talk to some of these uh, recycling places and say, Hey, we only want you to issue vouchers for food or vouchers for other things, not giving them the cash because when they get the cash, you're just supporting their drug habit but that's costing the city so much money. They just destroy garbage cans. And you guys see them at the light rail thing. It's just insane to watch somebody tear something apart for 40 cents in cans. So these are just some ideas and I know you guys are coming up with them, but uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Gail Osmer. Okay, am I unmuted? Great. 
Hi, you good are. afternoon, yes, everybody. Um, okay, here we go, trash. Uh, first of all, um, most of this trash is not from the unhoused community. Like Scott said, so many people put trash outside. They don't want to spend the money, and they blame it on the unhoused. All the encampments that I go to day in and day out, I give them bags, and they clean up their trash. Nobody within the city, the Caltrain, well, I don't want to say too much, well, the city, but they're not giving them bags. One or two bags, big deal. You need to give the unhoused bags. They don't want to live like this. I know these are all your supporters and you might be running for city council for a second term, but you need to be out there and maybe giving some of these unhoused folks bags. They will clean up. They don't like living like this. And, and another good thing that's going on for the city, I give them kudos, it's a little late, but the dumpsters. There's a few places, they're not putting them in the right places. And I've been talking to people, but the dumpsters are good. They need the dumpsters. They will put their trash in the dumpsters. I went to an encampment today that not too many people go to. They said, Gail, give us bags. We want to clean up our homes. And I know they will. But all you all see is just the trash and, you know, horrible unhoused people in the community and you blame the unhoused folks for everything, which is certainly not true. A lot of the house folks that live in a home are worse than the unhoused folks because they throw their trash out. So, you know, maybe if you could work with some advocates or whatever, talk to housing, you can know where to go to pick up some of this trash, hey, even though it's it is. Thank you. Hey, Gail. Hey, Gail. Uh, stay on the line for a while. I mean, not, not on the line, but I mean, please stay with us. We're going to talk about this issue about bag distribution. I think it's important. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yes. Um, Okay, uh, the person with the phone number adding in 5140, welcome. Yeah, I, there's, there's trash all over the freeways, there's trash everywhere, it's disgusting. Uh, homeless people do it, Every, everybody does it. You know, they're especially causing a lot of problems with their homeless camps full of trash. And if you're listening, Deb Davis, there's lots of trash at your Rose Garden heaping over in garbage cans. There's not enough garbage cans at the Rose Garden. The, the homeless people go in there and tear those garbage cans apart with more trash. There's no re proper recycling bins. You've got this tiny little recycling bin on top of a trash can that fits one can. Uh, You've you got these ugly steel drums that are heaping with, with, with trash everywhere. The, the main dumpster at the Rose Garden has got graffiti all over it. It's disgusting. This town needs to be cleaned up. I don't know what, what it's going to take, but there needs to be a service to, to just clean up things. And the homeless people, they, we're going we're gonna to give them a plastic bag? No, no, give me a barf bag when I have to smell the trash at the Rose Garden. Can you guys supply one of those for me? Disgusting. This town needs to be cleaned up. And you guys are not doing it. You're failed policymakers, every single one of you, including you, Sam Licardo. You know what you need to do today? Forget about this meeting. Go buy some paint for your house. You're going to need it. Thank you. Have a good day, sir. All right. So we're coming back to the panel. Um, I, I want to just, uh, in response to Gail's concern, I, I very much appreciate the concern. I would just point out, please, Gail, to communicate with our housing team where you believe those bags are needed um, and feel free to nudge, um, send an email to Paul Pereira and our team. Uh, you probably know, but you may not know, last year we started to launch a pilot program called Cash for Trash, where we're not only just handing out bags, but in fact, we're paying uh, those who are unhoused to clean up in the surrounding areas, save us an awful lot of trouble uh, and labor and save and hopefully earn a few bucks for them um, and and enable them to get by a little bit, just a little bit better. So um, that cash for trash program is being expanded now, I know, in this fall. And so please do communicate with us where you believe there's a strong interest uh, in particular encampments for a lot more bags, and hopefully we can reach those individuals. 
Okay, uh, coming back to the committee, um, Dave, or I'm sorry, Lee, did you want to respond anyway to the memorandum before we go to uh, other members of the committee? We're actually going to defer to Deputy City Manager Jim Orpal for that. Okay, Jim? Yeah, Mayor, thank you very much. Jim Orpal, Deputy City Manager. Um, just to your point on bag distribution. So our uh, downtown streets team and Goodwill teams are doing that as well. Our Beautify San Jose team are distributing bags as is our homeless outreach team as well. So we're doing bag distribution from a number of different points. If there's a location that needs them that are not getting them, that would be great to hear about it. So we can get that on our regular uh, route effort. So that's important to us as well. Just uh, overall on the proposal from the five council members, as we talked about yesterday at council, um, this is something that, that will take, uh, I think a fair amount of effort to get to a place where we're getting good consistent results from this effort. What, what I would suggest is that I'll do some outreach uh, to Caltrans uh, initially to kind of size up uh, what we think could be possible. I don't sense that Caltrans has available funding that they're going to send to the city to do this work. Uh, you may recall, Mayor, there was a one-time allocation that uh, Senator Bell got from Caltrans, about a $10 million allocation, I think it was about three to four years ago. And I think that's coming to the end of its funding. And I don't know that it has been renewed. Um, it's something we can explore with Caltrans, but I'm not convinced they're going to be able to uh, fund local governments to be able to clean up their properties. If they're willing to, I think that's something we can explore. But as I talked about yesterday, kind of the key thing is getting to the right locations with the right service, with the right frequency. And it's something we're trying to figure out on all of our properties. And I think Caltrans is not, not where we're at on that. And it will take a fair amount of work to do that. I think I'm as frustrated as all of you are in this situation, but I, we are running multiple emergency branches in the EOC. And if I'm gonna take this one on, I will move people off of other activities. That, that will occur in this process. I'll certainly assess it and try and figure out where we think the best return and result can happen in our city. And we'll be communicating that back to the council I don't think it's as simple as just getting Caltrans to agree to pay us to clean their properties. If it was that simple, I think that could have happened some time ago. We certainly need to look into this and pursue what's feasible and possible, but I don't think it's going to be something that's going to come easily or quickly. And, and that's just my kind of professional assessment of where we're at. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Uh, and I know that there were challenges in the past, as I mentioned yesterday around this issue of uh, indemnity. And I'm guessing that Nora's team is probably looking into that. Uh, and if I could have some indication from the city attorney, how long you guys think you might need to take a look at that issue again, just to sort of refresh and understand whether there's a path forward. Um, Mayor, we we have, I wanted to, um, to see the agreements and see what the problem was. We don't have anything, no, if it was, maybe five years ago is, is what we understood from your office. And yeah. we're not able to, in so, our, in our documents, we don't have it and we don't know which lawyer had it. Okay. Um, Mayor, I, I believe we have it. So okay. I, in fact, I think I just got it this morning, Nora. So okay. I will just check to confirm that I did get that from our city staff and I will get that to you and your, your team. Okay. okay. That'd be great. Um, then would it make sense, I know we want to hear from the, the committee here, but just in terms of the staff time to understand how best to move forward, does it make sense to come back in two weeks or? Are you asking me, Mayor, or the committee? Yeah, yeah Jim or Nora or Lee, <laughs> anyone. Yeah, I, I think two weeks would give us a chance to kind of size up what do we think is possible. Certainly we have Caltrans to look at. If we're staying just focused on Caltrans, that would be quicker. We know there are many other agencies and property owners in San Jose that probably deserve a, a, a quick assessment as well. But yeah, in two weeks, we can get back certainly on the Caltrans front. We'll know mm -hmm. what's in the agreement. We'll understand the indemnity issue. 
And then I can certainly have a, a conversation with our regional district director uh, yeah. that covers the Bay Area. And I'll, I'll certainly have that. I've given him a heads up that this is in front of our, our uh, committee today and that I would be uh, reaching out to him on that. And Jim, we're actually meeting with Tony Tavares, I think, this week. So uh, if we haven't invited you to that meeting, I'll make sure we do. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Um, and yeah, and it just so we understand, we, we've been at different times trying to engage to see how we can help Caltrans step up to the responsibility around cleaning the freeway. They had significant labor uh, workforce issues, just trying to keep people on the, the maintenance teams. Um, and then they had all kinds of problems trying to clear people to get medical clearance to be able to get on. It just, I won't bore everyone with all the details, but it was a, you know, ultimately we decided to go the route of, of having them contract with the Conservation Corps. And ultimately that had to happen through the county because of what we understood to be obstacles at the city. So um, I'm very happy to re-engage in this because th this is, I know, a complete mess and we've got a lot of work to do. I should also note that I've communicated yesterday to the governor's team about concerns that we have about people who are living too close to the freeways where we've got people darting out into traffic on the off ramps and so forth. Uh, and the uh, Cal OES directors indicated he'll get back to me right away. Um, that's Mark uh, Carducci. So uh, we will hear more from them shortly. All right, Councilmember Carrasco. Hi, Mayor. No, I'm sorry. I was uh, going to speak on the next item. Okay, we'll come Thank back. Thank you. I appreciate Vice Mayor? it. Uh, yes, thanks, uh, Mayor. Um, a lot of what I was going to say has actually already been said, so I won't repeat it. But um, we're having the same issues in, uh, in my district. I've had some direct conversations with uh, Caltrans and um, I did not walk away from those conversations uh, feeling optimistic that uh, we're gonna get resources anytime soon to, to address the problem. But as was stated in the, in the memo, uh, our residents can no longer tolerate us putting it on Caltrans or them putting it on us. They just want the problem fixed and whatever we need to do to, to address it and get the, the, those areas cleaned up, we're just gonna have to do it. And I know it's a money issue, but um, it's at the point where it's, it's not sustainable. Uh, we had one area uh, in my district that was on, along the um, sound wall that we actually were able to get cleaned up. And it was uh, about four feet high and about a quarter of a mile long of just trash and debris. And uh, with um, propane tanks and other flammable um, materials that could, could have created a fire or other, other hazards. And, and again, um, we had a, a house that almost caught on fire. We had a um, vehicle that was set on fire because of uh, debris and, and fires and, and propane tanks and adjacent to, to homes. And again, uh, if we don't address it, I don't think our residents will be able to um, put up with it any longer. So we have to find a way, Jim, and I'm looking forward to uh, you coming back in, in two weeks and, and offering up some possible pathways to, to address this. But at the end of the day, I think it's gonna rest on our shoulders to, to, to fix. I fear you're right. Council Member Arenas. Uh, thank you, um, Mayor. Actually, um, I was gonna speak on something uh, okay. In terms, well, actually, I just want to make sure that what I heard you say was correct. And earlier, you said that um, uh, there were some concerns about the encampment cleanups and some of the hazardous items that are involved in, in cleaning up. And it sounds like we are going to go into an agreement with the county to have the county then be in agreement with the Conservation Corps to take some of this on. No, that, that's what happened like uh, probably three or four years ago when we pushed oh. to try to get them to get more staff to do the maintenance. What we were finding was that Caltrans had a budget for Santa Clara County and they had a whole lot of vacancies because they couldn't, because nobody could actually afford to live here who was on their maintenance crew. And so they would just say that the money was being spent, but we knew the money was being spent. It was all vacancies. And this is under the prior district director. Frankly, we had to push pretty oh. hard to get to the truth. 
Uh, Tony Tavares has been much more forthright, I should say, in his role. And uh, eventually it became obvious that they just weren't employing any, but they had very small crew and a lot of vacancies and they weren't spending any money to clean anything up here. And so um, that's why we pu pushed for the Conservation Corps option. Got it. Well, yeah, I just want to bring up uh, once again that if we get into an agreement with Caltrans that um, we're going to expose our city workers to hazardous materials as well. And so I just think we need to um, make sure we take that into account when we're coming into an agreement and that they, um, the compensation uh, is commensurate to the risks that folks are taking out there. Yeah, agreed. Uh, Councilman Camus? Okay, good. Uh, so, so for those people who are listening, uh, the city of San Jose has free large item pickup and can easily be rescheduled. Um, and so the people who are putting out stuff that say free, um, it doesn't need to say free. It could be picked up by, you know, it's online. The, the San Jose 311 system is, is free to use as well. And it's really, an, uh, and if you don't have it, you, there's a, a phone number you can call. It's a very easy system to, to navigate. I could tell you that personally. Um, that being said, I, I am confused about this county situation. And if, and if they do have a contract, Jim, if you can let us know if the contract's still in place with, with the, um, uh, uh, the, the Conservation Corps, if that's the case, then we need to start calling the Conservation Corps. Uh, I, I, I just wanted to see what is currently in place. Um, and I, I, I know that uh, the, the, the cleanup on Almaden Expressway and um, Highway 85, which is actually in District 9, by the way, um, is scheduled for pickup, but it actually, you know, three weeks from now, it's gonna be the same thing. And, and, and we just kind of need to know who to call. If not, um, I just, you know, there was some people who are willing to do the work for free um, you know, and, and, and I'd like to work with you on that as I, I already gave you the phone number of one person who wants to take some charge in the neighborhood. Uh, but there's got to be more that we could do. And I really appreciate looking if you could turn over every rock that you can in the next two weeks um, with the, with the, with the, whatever the county is doing, whatever the, uh, the Conservation Corps is doing. If we had an agreement that just didn't get inked, um, I'd like to see if the uh, you know what's left in our budget for cleanups. And if we can do the job cheaper than Caltrans can, we certainly can. We help them. I know that we helped them with the graffiti paint a while back, and they actually use they use our uh, GSN or who I forget the name of the company. They actually use our graffiti mitigation team um, to do graffiti because that problem it gets solved much faster. Um, so, and I and I appreciate you turning over those rocks uh, if you can before the, the next two weeks. Yeah, Councilor, we'll turn over as many rocks as we can. Uh, I'm going to be up front, though. We have many other rocks that we're trying to turn over. And I think I described how many of those rocks yesterday we are trying to turn over. So we, we will use our best kind of triage and prioritization system to get to the rocks that re return the best result to our city. And I'll lay that out as thoroughly as I can in a couple of weeks. I, I appreciate that. And I, I can tell you that the five mem five members of the council that signed that memo don't include Chappie or the mayor. So don't include the vice mayor or the mayor. This is a very serious, you know, topic. And we, it's a subject of a lot of what people are, are, are calling the failure of government at this point. So, And I'm getting the sense that, that this council is feeling like reallocation of scarce resources to this problem is important. That's what I'm getting the sense of. And, and we'll factor that into our, assessment and and any recommendations that we bring back to the committee thank you and so i don't know i i i don't think i need to make a motion if it's going to come back in two uh two weeks do i um i think we're comfortable i think i understand what the committee is looking for and i think as an administration we're prepared to do that initial work and bring it back in two weeks i, I just want to agree i don't think we need a motion. Somebody, do i need a motion or is it yeah. just going to come back Tony. This is Tony. We wanted to clarify what you meant by two weeks. Do you mean to come back on the, the 16th 
um, that gives staff about a week to write the memo or the 23rd, which gives them two. I, I, I don't think we need a memo. I just yeah. think we need staff to come back yeah. to the rules committee to tell us what the status is of the various legal and logistical issues. I think that's what we're looking for. Is that right, council member? Yes. Yeah. The 16th or the 23rd? I, I think we can do it by the 16th. We'll, okay. we, will, we understand the, the urgency. So we will work on that by the 16th. Thank, Thank you, Jim. And yeah. I'll, I'll add that um, our office will look at whether or not this is just an obligation of Caltrans along their rights of way and uh, whether or not there are, is really an agreement we need to get, enter into or if they are just supposed to be doing that cleaning. So we'll look at that question too. Thank you, Nora. Mm -hmm. And if I could just offer for whatever, the, you know, just to respond to that, I think the questions that were raised about who's doing what in terms of staffing and cleaning. Um, as I understand, there are really three entities that are providing people who are doing the work. And that is Caltrans doing some of that directly. Some of it was being done through the Sheriff's Work Program, the probationers, and that's been shut down because of what's going on at the jail now. So that's one group of people who are no longer cleaning. Uh, and then the, the third was the Conservation Corps through that contract with the county uh, which I think we contributed to, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, there's um, there's plenty, and I, I guess Paul Pereira just provided me with a whole bunch of documents involving MOAs and so forth. I'm guessing Jim, you have all those documents. If not, I'm happy to get you what we have. I'll, I'll follow up with Paul, Mayor. Okay, I, I see a whole bunch in my inbox here. So <laughs> uh, great, thank you. Uh, all right, uh, then we do not need a motion. Uh, we'll come back. Um, to discuss that further in two weeks. And Jim, thank you for your willingness to, and Nora for your willingness to take on uh, more. Obviously we know there's a lot of uh, frustration, but th the truth is we've got a lot of work to do within the city limits that we can control. And it's hard, awfully hard for us to, to do it with entities that we don't control. So we've got to just uh, do our best and hopefully everyone can be patient as we're working through these challenges. All right, so the next item uh, up is uh, item uh, three, which is Proposition 17, Free the Vote California Act. There is a memorandum from Councilmember Carrasco, I believe she was trying to speak earlier. Uh, Councilmember Carrasco, did you want to be heard on this item? Or should we go to the public first? Uh, I, I did. If, uh, if you don't mind, if I can just make my case and then we can go ahead uh, and, and go to the public. Uh, sure. I'm, I, you have before you a memo that I've submitted. Uh, it is uh, seeking the council's support on Proposition uh, 17, which is uh, the Free the Vote uh, California Act. And I thank you so much for this opportunity to be able to speak before you. Currently, uh, the California Constitution disqualifies people with felonies from voting until their imprisonment and parole or probation are completed. We can go back to criminal disenfranchisement to 1850 when California became a state or when nations first became the republics. Criminal disenfranchisement was created to oppress the less privileged. In the last 40 years, due to the dramatic expansion of the criminal justice system, these laws have significantly affected the political voice of many Americans, communities of color in particular. Given current rates of incarceration, Three in 10 of the next generation of black men can expect to be disenfranchised at some point in their lifetime. In states that disenfranchise ex-offenders, as many as 40% of black men may permanently lose their right to vote. And about 50%, I'm sorry, about 50,000 Californians have returned home from prison and are currently doing everything that they can to rebuild their lives. They're working, they're paying taxes, they're married, raising children, they're contributing in one way or the other to their communities, yet they are still unable to vote at some point uh, and are unable to elect their representatives and help shape policies that impact their lives while they are on probation or on parole. Again, uh, I urge the council, or I urge this body 
to consider and to, uh, to agendize this item. We're at a historic point in, uh, in California, most definitely in the city of San Jose. Proposition 17 is a historic measure that will restore voting rights for Californians who have completed their pr prison term and will amend our state constitution. Voting, as you all know, is a fundamental right and blocking people on parole from voting means that our neighbors who are working and paying taxes, who are doing everything that they can to, uh, to rebuild their lives are being disenfranchised from this very right. As national recognition grows about the many forms of systemic oppression within our institutions, Proposition 17 is a clear way to help California reverse a racist legacy of voter suppression. I strongly urge my council colleagues to support this proposition, to agendize it, and to allow the dialogue to continue with the rest of our colleagues. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, let's go to the public now. Uh, Shea Franco Clausen. Can you hear me, Mayor? Uh, yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. Welcome. Welcome, Shay. Thank you. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you, Council Member uh, Woman Carrasco, for your leadership on this. My name is Shay Franco Clausen. I'm a native of San Jose and a voter. And I'm here on behalf of myself and in collaboration with many of the people that are in mm -hmm. our community currently working and paying taxes who do not have the right to cast their vote and determine the electoral turnouts and the fundings that happen in their community. I stand strongly and firmly with this as many of my own fellow siblings, uncles, and family members are also being disenfranchised by this specific law that has stemmed from Jim Crow era. I think that. I would hope my city of where I'm from, where I'm proud to say I'm from, will follow the leadership of the governor Newsom, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Governor, our own assembly member Ash Kalra, and the coalition of assembly members who brought this together, including the author, assembly member McCarthy. This is being presented to you because the community is speaking up. The civil unrest is intersecting and in how we hold people from having a voice is when we hold them from the ballot booth. So I really encourage my city my city electives, and thank you again, Councilwoman Carrasco for your leadership and that you put this on the agenda and let the community stand up and free the vote by supporting yes on Prop 17. Thank you, uh, Jamila Land. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can, welcome. Well, thank you, I appreciate you uh, having me and more so importantly, I appreciate you all taking the time to uh, hear me out and consider Proposition 17. So uh, like Ms. Franco, who called in a, a moment before myself, um, I would like to strongly encourage you all to support this key piece of legislation as we are in the middle of one of the largest civil rights movements since the 1960s. I mean, we are talking about the necessity of systemic change throughout this nation. I believe that re-enfranchising those who have been disenfranchised at the ballot box is one of those key things. Um, as stated before, um, there's a large demographic of people who look like myself, who have been formerly, who are formerly incarcerated, that are working tax paying citizens that are not able to engage in the civic process by being able to vote. With the passage and the support of Proposition 17, we will be able to um, re-enfranchise them. Uh, the state of Florida did it in 2018. Um, and I believe that it is one of the fundamental parts of re reinstating the rights of those um, who have felt as though they are no longer a part of this country uh, through being able to share their vote at the ballot box. Um, there are a lot of things that we see that are happening throughout the nation right now around police brutality and around police killings. I mean, there's a large demographic of people who, who are not able to vote because of felony disenfranchisement, but who are also now starting to wake up and realize that the district attorneys that are not bringing charges against these officers are in fact elected officials, that the sheriff's departments uh, are headed by elected officials. And so being able to give people back that right and that voice, I believe will also help to uh, mitigate some of the civil unrest that we are seeing throughout this country. Thank you. 
Assembly Member Ashkara, welcome back. Thank you, Mayor uh, and Council Members. It's been fun sitting on the line, pulling my own hair out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But, no, 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 no. I, I don't. I, I, what I meant to say is uh, pulling my own hair out and listening about Caltrans as well. Yes. Um, anyway, <laughs> thank you. Just the issue at hand. I, I really want to thank. Uh, I, I want to thank uh, Councilmember Carrasco for bringing this forward. You know, this is something that's been incredibly important for the legislature uh, under the leadership of Assemblymember McCarty, as well as uh, Secretary of State Padilla. I'm proud to be a joint author on what was ACA six to authorize putting um, Prop 17 on the ballot. And uh, or Council Member Carrasco put it really well in terms of the historic aspect of disenfranchisement in our nation. Uh, and the reality is that uh, the restrictions of, of the right to vote do connect us back to the times of slavery. And uh, not just in the Deep South, but in Reconstruction and post-Reconstruction, uh, Jim Crow laws uh, were uh, flagrant even here in California. So we do play a role in correcting historic wrongs. We know two things. We know that our democracy is stronger when everyone can play a part in it. And we also know that our community is safer when folks feel connected to their community and connected to their, their democracy. So uh, we know that when someone has the right to vote, uh, that recidivism goes down and their participation in the community goes up. Uh, there are already a dozen states uh, that allow um, allow for those um, that have uh, prior convictions to actually move on with their lives. Uh, and in fact, we are the only democracy, the democracy that has a life that in some cases have uh, li has a lifelong restriction on voting for anyone um, that has been previously in prison. So we need to move forward. The current movement that we're seeing around this nation dictates it. It's the right thing to do. And it will make me so proud to have the city of San Jose join uh, in this effort to free the vote. And so with that, Mr. Mayor uh, and, and committee members, I really hope that we can send this to the full council and support Councilor Carrasco's uh, memo. And I appreciate her for bringing this forward. Thank you, Assembly Member, and thank you for your leadership on this issue as well. Uh, uh, Blair Beekman. Hi, thank you. Um, thanks for this item. It was, uh, it's, it, it has the feeling that it can offer a sense of organization to uh, voting rights issues. I think since 2000, at least 2008, when uh, Barack Obama was elected president, from about that time, you know, we entered a new era of, of voting rights issues and it was pretty ugly. And this, I think, uh, this measure seems to create a sense that it's organizing that time finally. And, you know, I, I really think that we can do that and we will be able to do that. And it's sort of how we're trying to address uh, uh, Trump, uh, the, the current president and his administration at this time about voting rights issues and what can be fair voting rights issues. And so thank you for these efforts and, and, and good luck in all of our efforts for, for good voting rights. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Karina Herrera? Yes. Can you hear me? Welcome. Yes, we can. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Corina Herrera Loera, currently serving our city as the board vice president for the Allen Rock Union Elementary School District. As elected officials, we are voted into office to represent our entire community. And by supporting Proposition 17, we will allow more in our community to serve uh, and have a voice. By not supporting Proposition 17, we only continue to oppress the less privileged. I urge our city to join in a and supporting Proposition 17. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Latoya Fernandez, welcome. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, awesome. All right. Hey, welcome. everybody. How y'all doing? Latoya Fernandez, education activist, founder of Youth Hype, queen out here. Um, yeah, we got to support this because we have not reformed the system at a federal level. So we know that our folks that are in prison um, that are incarcerated, that are convicted felons, are in there uh, as a result of systemic racism. And because we have not reformed that system as a state, as a county, um, as a city, I think this is a great first step and at least providing people back their basic right as an American, especially because they've already been victimized and oppressed, you know, by the system. 
So, I mean, that's all I got to say on that. I actually don't need to take up any more time. I hope that y'all make the right decision. Um, it, you know, it's just the right thing to do, basically, you know, just down to a human level. Folks have been oppressed by the system. This is the result of that. Until we reform that system, we can, at, like, at a very minimum, provide some relief. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Armando Barbosa? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Hi, you guys. Uh, my name is uh, Armando Barbosa. I am the ATU-265 organizer, ATU-265 San Jose Latino Caucus president, and I also serve on the board for the San Jose United Lowrider Council here in San Jose. I stand with and agree with Senorita Carrasco and Shea Franco to restore rights and to support Prop 17. I am more than once a convicted felon many times over. Since then, a college graduate twice after. I am a, pro a productive member of our community of San Jose and stand in support to restore rights, Prop 17 in full support. Gracias. Change is possible, you guys. Thank you. Victor Duarte Vasquez. Uh, buenas tardes. Just want to start off by appreciating all the diversity and the voices that we're hearing today, and also Councilmember Carrasco's leadership and ensuring that we have a deeper democracy. We all know since the beginning of this country, most states have always enacted some kind of law to disenfranchise poor people, poor indigenous, black, Asian, PI, you name it. And we know that voting and citizenship have been denied to people of color. Um, and this nation established the first uh, code, these kind of codes to you know, in front, uh, give the privilege and power of voting to free, free white men of good character. Um, this also means, like uh, Councilmember Carrasco mentioned, that Mexicans have been denied that right to vote, even though they were incorporated into this nation as citizens at the beginning. So today, these barriers are enacted in California policy. We see that prison people in prison and parole are denied the right to vote. Like everybody's mentioned, these are hardworking people in our community, and it's our responsibility here locally to restore, face our reality that California has this racist history, but also take our action to restore the right to vote for all Californians. I encourage you all to put this item on the agenda for the community to weigh in, to actually endorse it in the future. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Milan Ballantin. Milan Ballantin, Executive Director of the African American Community Service Agency. I'm calling in to uh, encourage and ask uh, the council members to support Proposition 17, as you've heard from all of the wonderful speakers uh, and how this restores um, the faith in the voting system to put the vote in the people's hand and allow them to make votes uh, that will go towards those that they are seeking to get elected and on issues that are going to impact their lives and the community that they live in particularly in the black and Latino communities who've been affected by people. I do encourage you all to cast your vote in favor of this. Thank you. Thank you. All right, returning to the committee, uh, I'm happy to support uh, this going forward to council and and, and their council. I, I, um, I recognize though that, uh, of course, we are jammed as we experienced last night. We were in council till 1 a.m. Our past practice had been with state ballot measures and proposition, propositions that they be the last items on the council so we can prioritize those items uh, over which the city actually has some control. Obviously, a state ballot measure is really up to the voters of the state. And so I would again ask uh, whatever date we pick for this. I know the request was for the 15th. Uh, I know the 15th is going to be jammed up, um, but whatever it is, it'd be the last item on so we can deal with the critical matters on that date. Uh, it has to do with policing and uh, various police reforms and uh, the after action report uh, from the protest. So uh, I would just uh, suggest it be, uh, be put last on the, uh, the calendar so we can deal with uh, the most urgent matters that we actually have control over. Um, Council Member Arenas. Hi. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm smiling because I'm, I'm um, Zooming with my daughter, uh, so you might hear some chatter. Um, I, first of all, I just want to thank uh, Councilmember Carrasco, Assemblymember Calra, and all of the callers who've taken the time to um, uh, demonstrate your support um, with your public comment. And um, 
I'm also very supportive of this and I appreciate uh, Mayor that you're uh, supporting this. I agree that it should be um, maybe the last item on our agenda as this is something that we endorse, um, but it's not necessarily something that we make happen. Um, and uh, I just wanted to recognize that California, um, there's, there's, we, we are thought of as a very progressive state, but there's states like Maine and Vermont that have no laws that disenfranchise and discriminate against people that have uh, cr criminal convictions, even while they're serving their sentences. And so I think it's really time to, to correct this, as many people have said, brown and black people are overrepresented in our, um, in our jails. And, um, and it's, it's about time that, that we allow for people who are paying taxes and who are on parole and paying taxes uh, to be represented because this is taxation without representation. And so um, voting is, is not a privilege, it's a right. And, and we must uh, give that right back to, to our folks um, when they complete their, their sentences. So I'd like to um, uh, motion to uh, move this to September 15th meeting. Second. There's, there's a second from Vice Mayor Jones. Vice Mayor? Uh, yes, and so uh, Councilmember Reyes, that motion included having it as the last item on the agenda. And having it as the last item, yes. Okay. And, and before I finish, I just want to say, I want to take a moment to say happy birthday to my son. He turns 12 today. Um, and I'm probably <laughs> extremely embarrassing him, but um, I just wanted to say that. Happy birthday, Andres. Aww, I know the last you. thing Andres wants is a proclamation on his 12th birthday. So <laughs> we'll, we'll bore him with that next year. A anything uh, I can do to embarrass him, I, I'm guessing, is contributes to his development and character. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Andres, hope you get a good birthday gift. Good luck, buddy. That's happy. All right. So, uh, <laughs> I also want to support Councilmember Carrasco's uh, memo as well. Um, these types of laws preventing people from from voting are some of the last vestiges of uh, Jim Crow, and uh, they were designed to disenfranchise uh, Black people and people of color. And uh, it's time for them to come to an end. And so um, I wholeheartedly support uh, this uh, proposition, and uh, I think it's it's time for the city of San Jose to be very clear in terms of, we wanna make sure that all of our residents who have a right to vote are able to vote. So that's why I second the motion. Thank you, Vice Mayor. And thank you, Council Member Carrasco for your leadership and to all the community leaders who came out to speak. All right, any further comments? All right, let's vote, Tony. Arenas? Yes. Davis? Aye. Chemis? Aye. Jones? Aye. Ricardo? Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. If I could just say one last thing besides happy birthday, Andres. Uh, I hope that uh, in 2020, we will be the 20th state to uh, overturn uh, the constitution uh, in California. So thank you so very much, uh, council colleagues. Okay, thank you. Thank you, council member. Okay, uh, on to open forum. Mr. Beekman. Hi, thank you. Uh, in the spirit of that uh, past item, uh, I really wanted to mention uh, the, the Vietnamese language issue that's on Zoom and the interpretation issue. You, I was told, we were all told uh, during August that the problem would be fixed by sometime in September. You know, it's the first week of September now. I want to continuously be reminding yourselves of the issue so you will be, you know, wanting to fix it. You know, it's an issue that we all have, you know, I think can find pretty ridiculous at this point. And, but at the same time, we want to respect, you know, whatever problems and hangups Zoom has because they obviously have some. And, you know, how do we just talk through that? It's, it's important to do and it'll accomplish a lot. So I, I hope you guys will be really changing the the name of the uh, of the of the label in the next 
few weeks and are just not, you will be continuously working on the issue. It is top priority. I am just insulted to no end that I have to look at that each time I, I push the uh, interpretation to see the word German. Uh, that is insulting as it gets, easily. And so I, I hope you work on the issue. And uh, I, with 35 seconds, uh, you know, I, I did not know that there was a protest this week. And um, whatever they were about, I feel personally that the mayor was actually Whatever they were protesting about, the mayor is on the cusp of, of coming over to a good opinion about. So I, I hope we can negotiate at this time, and I thank the mayor for his patience to want to be able to negotiate good, good, uh, good practices from from what the protests were about. And uh, thank you, Scott Largent. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Scott Largent. Um, back to what I was talking about, about the, uh, the protesting that happened on Friday night. Um, you know, I, I let you guys know, I, I kind of was in my van. I was kind of half asleep, and then I woke up when everybody was marching from City Hall. Um, I, I, I support people's right to civilly and peacefully protest. Um, problem is, is people are getting very scared in our community now. Um, and some of the videos that I reviewed, um, you know, when they're blocking traffic, and I understand people are marching down the street, the people on the other side of the street, they're literally starting to move their car. I mean, they're getting scared. And my concern is, is um, the youth of our community getting run over when somebody starts to panic. Um, they watch a lot of stuff that's going on in the news and, and people are worried. Um, a lot of the, I believe they're called anti um, they have they have showed up in our community um, in numbers and they're out there with shields, umbrellas. And the chance of get to the front of the line, and if you're not willing to fight, get out of here. Um, the stuff about killing police officers and killing elected officials, I mean, this stuff is shocking. Um, and you've seen a lot of you of, of, of what's on the news right now of, of protesters ending up going to a mayor's house or a, a councilman or a, or a supervisor. Um, that's unacceptable. Your home is your castle. Um, and I do hope, Mayor Licardo, um, that something is done. I hope you prosecute these people that lit a fire in front of your house, that vandalized your home, that threatened to kill your neighbors. I'm hoping that you do the right thing. Um, they vandalized all of our courthouses downtown when they marched through. They also terrorized a woman and her child on a balcony um, um, right near the law library right there. Um, I was also assaulted. And so people are aware um, when you're out there filming now, they start to pinpoint who you are and, and they come after you. They wait till the camera goes down and they try to jump you. Um, this is not normal. This didn't happen at the other protesting. And I just hope you do the right things before the federal government has to come in and prosecute them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I believe those are all the members of the community who came to speak. That means adjourn. Thank you, everyone.